Uh, our meeting format is integrated with members of the public via Zoom. Members of the public who are using Zoom may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and on the agenda. Uh, welcome to the board members and members of the public and our staff. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we have myself, uh, Logan Pitts, the chair. We have our vice chair, Paul Castillo, who's arriving just in time. Good work, Paul. Um, and board members Guido Boccaleone, Madonna Cruz, Omar Lopez, Carolina Spence, and Carol Kwan. Uh, our hosts for tonight are Julie Guzzi and Amy Hennessy. So the host will coordinate comments from the public and assist during the meeting and take notes for any follow-up needs. Please silence your cell phones while in the meeting. And if you're phoning into the meeting and you choose to speak during public comments, a uh, portion of the agenda for privacy concerns, we will rename you the caller and only show the last four digits of your phone number. And the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment, free from disruption, and we will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end. Host, will you please explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Thank you, Chair Pitts. If you are attending in person, there are cards at the entrance. Please complete a separate card for each item you wish to speak on and place it in the basket. You will be called up by your name when the item has been discussed and is open for public comment. You will be asked to approach the podium and state your name for the record. After an agenda item has been presented, the chair will ask the board members for their comments or questions, and then immediately following the item will be open for public comments. If virtual hands are raised on Zoom prior to public comment, the host will lower all hands until the public comment item is open to all. Once the chair has called for public comment, those in person may raise their hand and wait to be called to the podium, even if the comment card has been completed. Those on Zoom may then raise their virtual hand or if you have called in, dial star nine to raise your hand and you will be called in order as they appear on the screen. Those joining by phone will be called by the last four digits of their phone number. The host will determine in order in which the public may comment, whether on Zoom or in person. All public comments will be heard until there are no more hands raised in person or virtually. Each public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will appear on the screen. <clears throat> Any email comments that were received by the deadline will have been included and uploaded to the agenda prior to the start of today's meeting. Emails received are not read into the record. Thank you, Julie. And then before I convene the meeting, I do wanna welcome Julie as our new staff on the Board of Community Services. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And I also wanna thank Paul for stepping in the last two meetings and chair. Thank you, glad to have you back. Thank you, good to be back. With that, I call this August 23rd, 2023 meeting of the Board of Community Services to order at 5.05 .05 p.m. Host, may we have roll call, please? Please respond when I call your name. Chair Pitts. Yes. Vice Chair Cast Castillo. Present. Board Member Boglioni. Here. Board Member Cruz. Here. Board Member Lopez. Here. Board Member Spence. Here. Board Member Kwan. Here. Let the record reflect that all board members are present. Great. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for public comments on non-agenda item matters. Uh, this is the time when any person may address the board on matters not listed on this agenda, but are within the subject matter of our jurisdiction. Host, do we have any public comments? Yes, we do. We have one. Great. One person. Hello. Mr. DeWitt, please, please proceed. I'm from Roseland, and I wanted to come today to make sure and thank some of the recreation and park staff who've been helping us at what we call the Roseland Neighborhood over between Burbank Avenue and McMinn Avenue, and at times it can seem a bit neglected. There have been times in the past where we were almost overwhelmed because of how folks who decided it would be a good spot to camp came in and began to live in the area. And we do our best out there trying to keep it nice and clean, doing good things. Luckily, the last uh, say at least a year and a half maybe more staff uh, here in your department has been helping much more and it's much nicer and I actually want to give a shout out to uh, 
the uh, park supervisors because they've been making sure to come over there and pick up stuff that gets dumped on the street, even though the signs say no dumping, and no camping. People ignore that stuff. Recently, I've come. Uh, Mr. Pitts missed it the last couple times, but I brought up the idea that was put forward by the elected representative of our district number one. His name is Eddie Alvarez. And he's put out the, <clears throat> I guess you might call it community feeling. He went and talked with people and then let it be known that he felt they were correct in having what you call a community park be called Pomo Park and Preserve. And in the past, when this effort was first put forward to save that land from development, people had pointed out that Pomo had lived along the creek. And that was acknowledged in city documents. It's always been put forward by the community. There should be a recognition that the Pomo were there first. And uh, the preserve is because the Agricultural Open Space District already purchased 11 acres and put it under a conservation easement to the north side of Roseland Creek. So the park, a neighborhood park, could be there on the creek and the south side. Please put that in the record. Please let today's record show in your minutes that this has been brought up because no one has gotten back in touch with me over the last couple of months about how to rename this, even though I've come here and we put it forward. It should be a relatively simple process for someone to contact with and give me the document that I might need or whatever has to be done to go ahead and do it. I've taken the time, two separate days over two months, this is the third time. So let that be known to staff. How do we rename this? I've seen in previous meetings in the past where people came forward and asked to get things renamed in their neighborhood. Thank you for your time. Homo Park and Preserve. Thank you, Dwayne. <clears throat> do we have any other public comments? Uh, no, we do not in person or in Zoom. OK. Um, and we are uh, crafting a naming policy, Mr. DeWitt. So that is in the process. Um, yep. Uh, the next item is item four, the approval of minutes. Uh, are there any edits or corrections to the minutes of July 26th? Which I believe uh, Julie has printed out for us all. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess that is the appropriate thing to do, board member Cruz. So I'll abstain as well. Um, do we have any other edits or corrections? Okay, uh, we will consider those approved as submitted with myself and board member Cruz abstaining. Uh, reports on upcoming events and accomplished events. Deputy Director Sam Santos, please give your report. Thank you, Chair Pitts. And uh, with respect, I would like to request that we move item 8.2 before this is, if possible, uh, to allow our um, staff member to attend an award ceremony. Yes. Otherwise, I'd be happy to provide the report as well. So um, we'll do that. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So. Would you like to move that to right now? This do you? Yes. That That's fine. My request. Okay. That would be okay. So that we can allow our staff member giving the presentation to attend an award ceremony <laughs> uh, for an award she's receiving. That's fine. You have to tell us what the award is, though, <laughs> and why you're getting it. It's from the Santa Rosa City School for our whole team. Great. Uh, that was all, all the information I got about the <laughs> Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Good afternoon and evening, whatever time we're in now. Uh, Jeff Tibbetts, Deputy Director for Recreation, and Danielle Gardino, Program Manager for the Violence Prevention Partnership. Um, so yes, a great way to introduce the Violence Prevention Partnership is that Santa Rosa City Schools is, is honoring the partnership um, for their support of the schools yeah, we'll get a little bit more information this evening um, to those specifics, but um, for the par partnership's role in supporting the schools um, through San Jose. So uh, we thank you for being flexible and letting us go a little bit earlier so that we can uh, be in both places this evening. Uh, I, this is really going to be Danielle's presentation to you. 
um, in regards to kind of an introduction of what the Santa Rosa Violence Prevention Partnership is. Um, and I just wanted to open up with why we're giving you that presentation today. So um, as some of the restructuring has taken place with our department, Recreation and Parks formally back together as a department, um, sometimes a lost detail of that was that uh, the Violence Prevention Partnership is officially back under the umbrella of Recreation and Parks as well. So uh, Violence Prevention Partnership is part of our department and hence the reason of wanting to introduce you. Uh, our goal was to introduce you to the whole team, but we've asked the rest of the team to go straight to the other board meeting. Uh, but you'll get to see their faces on the screen um, and then you'll get to introduce a little bit. Um, but we are really excited. Um, the Violence Prevention Partnership starting as the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force when measure was first um, passed in 2004 was under recreation and parks. Um, so this is a this is not something that's totally new. Um, and so we're excited about it. Neighborhood services, which you've received presentations about the different programs that they do, um, summer programs, after school programs, sports, those things. Uh, I think it's really gonna be good for our community. It's gonna increase communication. It's gonna increase um, some efficiencies. And so we're really looking forward to uh, neighborhood services and VPP. Uh, they've always been working together, but being under the same umbrella is really going to open opportunities. And Danielle and I are, are discussing on a regular basis how to make that work the best and pull those teams together and really have them collaborating and, and addressing services that are needed in our community at, at the highest level. In addition to, and I, I won't go too far, in addition to all the other organizations that are part of the partnership and, and making sure, you know, I think we all know it, it takes a village. Um, that, that's essentially the approach of the, of the partnership. It's, it takes a village, so bringing all those people to the same table to make sure that we're providing those services. So with that said, we just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction of what the partnership is, let you meet the team, not in person, um, but uh, let you meet the team. And, and uh, we originally were gonna do this as a presentation of VPP and neighborhood services together, but just the time frame of all the change and everything, we decided to introduce the group more, uh, first, but um, yeah, they'll be a part of the department that you'll be hearing more from in the future, so. That and you, yeah. Thank you, and thank you for having me here this evening. Um, I am excited to introduce the partnership to all of you. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Oh, no. uh, oh it takes a minute. She's, she's in a different location. <laughs> so just say it loudly so she can hear you. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. She's in as Jeff mentioned, uh, the partnership was originally formed as the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force in 2003. In 2004, uh, a ballot measure went before the voters here in Santa Rosa uh, called Measure O. Uh, it was a, it, it is, it was, <laughs> public safety sales tax, uh, providing 20% of the funding to uh, violence prevention. Uh, in uh, Last year, uh, 2022, uh, voters um, voted to extend that uh, tax measure, now known as Measure H, or the public safety sales tax, uh, to 2045, uh, uh, with the partnership still receiving 20% of the overall pot of public safety sales tax funding. Um, our 20%, um, as you can see here on the screen, 35% of that 20% goes directly back out to the community through our Choice Grant Program, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Um, and the remaining 65% uh, is for funding of staff. So that includes uh, partnership staff as well as neighborhood services staff um, and our operational costs for that. Um, and um, in addition to receiving the public safety sales tax funding for violence prevention, we also receive funding from probation for one of our positions, our wraparound coordinator position, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Next slide, please. Um, so we recently updated our mission, vision, and guiding principles uh, through our strategic planning process. The mission of the Santa Rosa Violence Prevention Partnership is to lead, mobilize, and align our resources in our community to create a safe and healthy environment where all youth are empowered to reach their full potential and all community members thrive. Our vision is that Santa Rosa emerges as a strong, resilient, and interconnected community where all residents are safe, healthy, and thrive. And we have six guiding principles uh, that we use uh, in our work. We build safe communities. We make a commitment to equity. We commit to using a coordinated community response. We do this work using a shared responsibility model. We build trusting relationships with each other and the communities in which we serve. And we value our youth and include them in our work. Next slide, please. Um, so now I will introduce you to our staff. Um, uh, aside from myself as program manager, uh, we have Madeline Brown, who is our current interim choice program analyst. So she oversees our choice grant program as well as helps uh, me out with some grant writing. Um, and she's also our senior admin assistant. 
um, as well helping us out with the day-to-day -day operations of our office. Gustavo Mendoza is our community outreach specialist overseeing our street outreach and crisis response programming. And then we have Miles Bergen, who is our community outreach specialist overseeing our communications, education, and training components. We also have two vacant positions currently. Um, those are our wraparound coordinator position, which we are in the process of filling. That person is in background right now, so hopefully they will be joining us next month. And I'll talk about the wraparound program that we have as well as um, our administrative analyst position, which is the permanent position um, that oversees the choice, uh, choice program that Madeline is filling in for um, right now. Next slide, please. Um, the partnership um, has um, had the same structure since uh, the early days of Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force. Uh, we have an executive team, which is made up of the mayor um, and, or sorry, it's actually the vice mayor, it's her designee. Um, who is the chair of the policy team, our chief of police, um, our uh, program manager, um, and Jeff also sits with us as well. Um, and likely our, uh, I'm not sure about how it's gonna go, maybe we get a recreation director, but that invitation will also be extended to that person as well. We have a policy team, uh, which uh, meetings are open to the public. Um, we meet the, every other month, third Wednesday of those months, so the next one is September 20th, 9 a.m. Um, at Steel Lane Community Center. Um, this team is a diverse set of stakeholders who all interface with the issues of youth and gang violence from different perspectives, while um, adding various resources to the discussion. Uh, these members provide leadership and direction by setting policies and monitoring the effect of effectiveness of our work. Uh, we also have a steering committee of the policy team, uh, which are select members of that team. They act as an advisory committee to provide leadership and guidance towards implementation of our strategic plan. We also have an operational team, uh, which is our boots on the ground folks working for our variety of different partners, working directly with uh, youth and their families out in the community. Um, this team uh, runs our multi, it's, it's considered our multidisciplinary action and referral uh, team. So they have uh, very specific case discussions about um, youth and families that um, need specific services and support, um, as well as uh, discussing a, or having a community climate update um, and sharing amongst one another um, so that they can share what's happening in their sector and how they can support one another. Um, those meetings um, are closed to the public because of the case discussion um, component of it. It actually falls under the Welfare and Institutions uh, Code. Um, as a closed meeting. Um, next slide, please. Now I'll go over to some of our current programming and efforts before I jump directly into our new updated strategic plan. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we have a grant program called uh, the Choice Grant Program. Um, we're currently in our 11th uh, funding cycle. Uh, current cycle 11, we fund eight agencies at $750,000 per uh, rank year. We just finished year one um, and started year two in July of this year, and the cycle runs through December of 2024. Um, we have a variety of different programs um, with these different agencies, um, including a re-entry program, uh, parent education and case management, uh, safe school and master's program through Community Matters, connecting youth to nature, mental health counseling and services, youth leadership development and access to child care child care services for preschool and after school care. We also have a choice mini grant program, uh, which provides up to $5,000 to eligible um, agencies. Um, it used to be kind of a catch all for those programs that weren't funded through the larger grant, um, helping them with some operating costs. However, due to the current nature of violence in our community, we've shifted the focus of that grant, mini grant program um, for crisis response. And so we're developing some protocols um, uh, for how we evaluate those applications coming in um, with this shift um, and funds will be used for things like temporary relocation if someone um, is witness to an act of violence and can be relocated to a different area um, or you know anything like um, paying for uh, access to food um, access to child care those sorts of things uh, next slide please we also run a variety of other programs including our guiding people successfully successfully program, which is our referral-based program. Um, this is in partnership with the Salem County Probation Department. Um, here is where our wraparound coordinator uh, works with our community partners receiving referrals um, for youth and families that need additional resources and support 
um, that those referring agencies cannot provide. They take in the referrals, they do intake uh, with the families, and uh, they make the appropriate referrals to our participating partner agencies. In addition to that, um, our um, community outreach specialist, uh, Gustavo Mendoza, who oversees um, street outreach and crisis response, um, he does uh, school engagement and um, teaches a life skills uh, course with some of our participating schools. So when there are, are uh, tensions that are high on campus, um, he works directly with middle schools and high schools in Santa Rosa um, to help de-escalate some of those tensions, check in with the kids. Um, and he's only been able, because he's only one person, <laughs> um, and has to um, navigate some other uh, program areas, um, he does teach the life skills class, but he's only been able to do it at um, Santa Rosa Middle School, um, Roseland Accelerated Middle School, and then he partnered with our neighborhood services staff this summer and um, taught the life skills course at um, the teen sports camp um, this summer. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what that school engagement will look like under our new strategic plan, but we have applied for funding to help us expand on that and provide more youth outreach, outreach workers to our middle schools and high schools. We have a crisis response protocol um, where we respond um, after an incident of violence in our community. So um, it has to rise to the level of something like a shooting or a stabbing, someone is seriously injured, um, or uh, there is a death that has resulted in that incident. Um, where we go into neighborhoods, uh, we provide outreach and connection to resources for the neighborhoods that are affected by the violence. Um, if there is a victim that has been seriously injured, uh, we meet with them, uh, we connect with them, and we help uh, connect them to the resources that they need while they recover. Uh, we also provide community education and awareness. Um, so we provide training for our partners within the partnership. Um, we've done trauma-informed care series, results-based results accountability training, and other value evaluation training and support. Um, we also do trainings around best practices um, when it comes to violence prevention. We do an annual seminar, which is open to the public. Uh, we are coming back for the first time since 2019. Um, it will be held on November 2nd this year, and we're really excited about um, what we're going to be bringing, um, it'll be going back to the basics and resetting um, for us. So we will provide a panel of um, experts um, from other communities across California to talk about best practices um, from their communities. And we're bringing in a keynote speaker um, who is an ex-gang member from Los Angeles who um, has written a couple of books. His name is Luis J. Rodriguez. Um, he is a former gang member from the early, or sorry, the late 60s, early 70s in prison, was addicted to heroin, um, and was able to turn his life around through writing and activism. Um, and he loves to come share his story about how he made it out of the gang lifestyle. So we're going to invite him, or we have invited him, he's accepted, he will be our keynote speaker. He'll also be um, speaking to the youth um, at the end of the seminar as well. So we're excited about that opportunity and hope to continue to do that each year. Um, next slide, please. So, looking ahead, um, we have updated our strategic plan. Our last plan um, was uh, implemented in 2017 and expired in 2022. So we went through the process of updating our strategic plan. Um, but it's really important that I just I want to briefly touch on where we're at right now uh, when it comes to violence in Santa Rosa. It's no surprise that we've seen a pretty significant uptick um, in violence here, community violence, and uh, violence among our youth in particular. We've had three uh, youth that have died, um, been under the age of 18 this year. Um, and since December of last year, we've had many youth that have been seriously injured due to gun violence, um, as well as stabbings here in Santa Rosa. Um, we've seen uh, an uptick in fights at our middle schools and our high schools, and our community partners have also noted a significant increase in difficulty real issues that they have never seen before, um, as well as um, gang involvement um, starting at earlier ages. Um, we had a uh, community partner report to us that um, we had a nine-year-old um, that was showing active signs of gang involvement, um, which is, I say, like third or fourth grade level. So um, it's, it's a serious issue, and uh, so we are we have updated our strategic plan to reflect the current climate here in our community. So next slide, please. Um, we went through a very extensive process. We hired a consultant um, who actually happened to be a former program manager and former city 
Council member Ernesto Alvarez to help us through this process. Uh, we conducted an analysis of uh, previous plans um, that we had here with the partnership as well as um, other engagement efforts that we have recently done, including the current community hub, um, community engagement phase, our community empowerment plan um, engagement, uh, listening sessions, and our most recent uh, community needs assessment through the partnership. We held one-on-one -on -one interviews with form former program managers and staff of the partnership, as well as members of the California Cities Violence Prevention Networks to figure out what was working for them and, and what was challenging for them. We also conducted focus groups with youth and attended several community listening sessions on um, school safety and held six workshops with our policy and operational teams, and that all culminated into a draft strategic plan being shared with our community at a June 27th community meeting held here at Rosalind University Prep. Um, we also conducted extensive research on other strategic plans and planning processes um, from other similar communities. Um, next slide, please. That leads us to um, our new plan and where our focuses are going to be. So um, I will be very transparent. Our first year is going to be heavily focused on intervention so that we are um, able to actively stop violence um, from happening in our community. Um, this includes um, building Elder Street Outreach in our school, um, school outreach uh, pilot program. Um, we have applied to the Bureau of Justice Assistance for through their Stop School Violence program. Um, and that will allow us to hire several youth outreach workers to deploy to our middle schools and high schools. Um, increasing student engagement, being able to provide life skills trainings or courses at um, all of our middle schools and our high schools here in Santa Rosa, and working with school staff and school administration on safety plans. In addition to that, uh, we've applied for funding to build out our crisis response team. Um, we partnered uh, on that application with Buckley Programs um, to respond to a request for proposals that we put out earlier this year. Um, the, I think it was through the California Department of Social Services uh, is where we submitted the application, and that will allow us to um, deploy community violence responders out into our community to do street outreach and respond to incidents and also provide a more robust hospital-based intervention services um, for victims of violence. Um, included in all of this, uh, we are looking at um, bringing back our workforce development piece. Um, we're looking youth to job opportunities, as well as training, resume building, interview skills development, um, and working with our partners, um, providing diversion enforcement and re-entry as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, prevention is a, another big area uh, of focus for us. We do we have a lot of organizations here in San Rosa and Stone County that do great prevention work. Um, so we're looking at continuing to support um, those programs as well as uh, providing more pro-social activities and safe spaces for our young people. Really wrapping up our youth engagement. Um, so we are looking at bringing back the Santa Rosa Teen Council. Um, and building out a structure for that and also trying to find funding and staff to be able to do that. Um, offering, again, preventative services, including mental health support um, and including youth in the, the design of those programs. Um, supporting our schools of uh, school readiness and student engagement opportunities as, as well as um, working on uh, gun, gun violence prevention as well. Next slide, please. Um, we are also um, continuing our work um, and sharing our story out to the community as to how we're doing and how we're using our public safety sales tax dollars through communication, outreach, and education. Um, this first year, we'll be working on building a communications plan um, as well as revamping and revitalizing our social media platforms. Um, I'm also looking at doing a uh, quarterly newsletter out to the community to keep everyone up to date on progress um, with the strategic plan um, and we're also looking at doing some proactive uh, community wellness pop-up events as well in, in the upcoming year. I mentioned our seminar, um, bringing that back um, and providing additional parent workshops for um, adults supporting uh, youth in our community. Next slide please. Investment is a going to also be another focus for us this year. Um, as you saw, we only received 20% of that public safety sales tax, and we're a very small team. We need more, need more staff and more support for this work. Uh, so we'll be actively pursuing grant applications uh, and opportunities, 
um, as well as building out um, our community outcomes and our, um, our, our shared measurements uh, within the partnership so that we can um, measure our, what we're doing, see how we're being successful, also see how we can make any improvements um, that will allow us to um, continue to be um, eligible and successful in funding. Um, and then also continue to be fiscally responsible with our public safety sales tax dollars and the grants that we have coming in. Next slide, please. And finally, collaboration. Um, so we will be taking a look at, we'll, we'll continue to operate the policy and operational teams. Um, we actually used to have a third team, uh, which was our multidisciplinary assessment and referral team, also known as MDART. We collapsed that with operational team. Um, because it makes more sense to have those case discussions um, at the operational team where all of our um, boots on the ground folks um, were attending. Um, so it provides more opportunity for collaboration. Um, in addition to that, we're also looking for this first year at um, developing um, our community advisory arm of the partnership and um, building out a subcommittee of the policy team where we have um, community members, including you, um, actively a part of um, the work that we're doing um, and then also looking to the future probably not in year one but um, laying the foundation this year uh, to start looking at how do we um, make our efforts regional violence doesn't stop at the borders of Santa Rosa um, and so we need to bring in other cities and the county into this work um, so that we can be successful and shared measurement again is um, making sure that we're collecting the data and that we're sharing that information out with and what we need to improve. And with that, next slide, please. That's my presentation. Thank you. How long do we have you for, Danielle? Probably like 10 more minutes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Do we have any questions from the board? Yes, I'd like to, can we give you our, our uh, email address so we can be getting news, news what's going on? And Absolutely. I don't have a pen on me right now, though. Can you, can you forward me the, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good. I'd like to be on your list. Carol and then Madonna. Thanks. <laughs> uh, first broad question, is the current situation unique to Santa Rosa, Sonoma County, California? You know, we're seeing this across uh, the country, actually. The behavioral issues are, um, you know, here in Sonoma County, uh, Santa Rosa County, we've had the wildfires, we've had the power shutoffs, we've had the flooding, we've had COVID, the social unrest in our community. All of that is compounding trauma, but other communities across California and across the nation have experienced their own, um, own incidences of trauma um, that continue to compound and continue to impact youth and their families. Um, it's definitely not unique to Santa Rosa. Thank you for that. Um, my second question is, I was, I'm very familiar with and engaged in neighborhood services which is kind of like your um happy bro happy sibling in this, <laughs> um where our recreation team does this great outreach what you're describing is much more serious than neighborhood services and my question is what the hell is this doing under park and rec to be perfectly blunt does santa rosa have mental health services why isn't this in a different department, why is this part of Park and Rec? It actually started in 2003 under Parks and Rec as part of Neighborhood Services. So we've actually come full circle. Um, and if you look at other models across California and other cities, um, including San Jose, who were modeled after, they're all housed under Recreation and Parks um, and, and alongside na their Neighborhood Services teams. The way I see it is I see Neighborhood Services as the prevention arm of the work that we do and the partnership is the intervention piece. Um, but also on top of that, the partnership isn't just our staff, the partnership is a collaboration of over 70 organizations here in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County. And so we work actively with all of our participating organizations because again, we get a small part of that public safety sales tax. And so we have to leverage and align and mobilize our resources so that we're able to be effective and provide the services and I'll just add to it, I think, especially when we use the term prevention and intervention, there's an element of prevention is the fun stuff, keep people out of trouble, and the intervention is responsive. 
I think if we do this right, and I think being under the same umbrella gives us the opportunity to do it better, is that intervention doesn't have to be responsive. And yes, with neighborhood services, there's so many fun stories to tell, and, and there's that element of what we present. There's also an element of building relationships with these families and realizing things and starting the intervention policy uh, process before it's something that's in the newspaper. Um, so that they're not just right. I mean, it doesn't end that the kids come and play basketball. It's getting to know the families and realizing, oh, there's an older sibling that this is going on, or um, you know, building those relationships and parents. And so, the more we were doing on the prevention side, the more the intervention becomes proactive instead of reactive. Um, and I think that when we are again, I mean, there's never a point that they weren't working together. But obviously, right. um, you know. You, the, the closer you are in proximity and, and admission and, and all those things, then it's, it's easier to do those things. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to address things in our community in a way that sounds positive. Um, and, and we've seen it, right? I mean, the, the model worked. Um, and unfortunately, in the way that our system works sometimes, it worked too well, um, where we had the problems that we had in the, in the 90s and into the early 2000s that led to this and numbers dropped a lot, we made a lot of progress. Unfortunately, because of that progress, we lost access to some of the other funding and those things that we had. Um, then you couple that with all these trauma um, resources, you know, unable to provide resources because of COVID and those types of things. Um, but I think we've seen that we got to a place in the community where it was being more proactive and, and that safety net was there to catch people before they fell or at the beginning of falling instead of waiting for people to fall and, be heard. So. Yeah, the other thing I forgot to mention too is so it started out as the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force um, in 2003, and um, it was quite reactive in the beginning, and then it, it kind of evolved to what it, it currently is now as the partnership. But in 2015, when it was rebranded to the partnership, we adopted a public health model. Um, so uh, looking at, um, at any public health issue, right, that, you know, what Jeff was just talking about, prevention, intervention. Um, but with any public health issue, you're, all, you're going to see improvements uh, when you do really put in the effort and the, and the funds and the resources into the issue. So it's like tobacco pre prevention. So I have a background in public health, so I always use tobacco prevention as, as an example. Put a lot of effort and resources and funding into tobacco prevention, and we saw the numbers of people using tobacco decrease. And then when we saw those numbers decrease, the funding, you know, was became less and less, and then the rates started going back up again. This is a public health issue, so you are going to see fluctuations um, with any public health program with violence prevention as well. This is the major concern. Okay. Donna. Um, you in the choice grant slide, you you said amount. What was that amount? Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars per year, currently for this okay. Uh, cycle. Okay, great. And um, the seminar in November second, I'm really interested in attending that. Um, also, the September twentieth. Um, the age of the youth that are getting younger and younger that you mentioned, nine years old was one. Um, do would you be sharing the data? Uh, what race, uh, the location that they live, and then what maybe their ACEs score is? Um, we don't have that level of data. However, at the seminar, we are going to have a, a workshop um, conducted by um, Santa Rosa Police Department on just gang trends in general in Santa Rosa. And they can, they can definitely provide, um, they'll be able to provide the hotspot areas, so locations that these are happening in. Um, and, um, some of the, da the data that they collect, uh, but we don't collect specific information about specific individual um, youth. And just to touch on a little bit more, I mean, you want to be careful in terms of, you know, some of that update is some of that climate update that's taking yeah. place in the service providers. It's a whole extra step to take to officially identify that youth yeah. as a gang member um, and the ramifications that have. So there's also an element, not of just that we're not collecting it, but it also takes a a step to take to, you know, as opposed to saying, hey, in the climate, we're noticing these things, this kid's showing signs, as opposed to they are an actual game taking game. a step over to yeah. officially identify that where it could be data. Yeah. Um, again, and then also in the, in the mission statement, all youth are empowered. What are the local tribal homo youth being empowered of? Uh, well, we're actively, we've engaged uh, the, um, the 
in the uh, Sonoma County Indian Health Project. So we're putting together the, the team council, right? Um, and my staff has just gone out and completed uh, focus groups with a variety of different partners that have uh, youth programming. Um, and we went to Sonoma County Indian Health uh, Project um, and talked to their staff. Do um, you know who you met with? I can't remember the name. Um, I would like to know the name. Sure, I can give you that information. Um, got feedback from um, how they run their program programming and what their youth, what would work for their youth in, in our new team council. Um, and so when we actively recruit, then we want to go back out to those agencies and then open it up also broader for that participation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, then you talked about positions that you're opening up. Are you considering, because I don't see any POMOs on staff, there are a lot of Como youth here um, with last names um, that may look uh, Hispanic, but they're in the schools because I know I volunteer my time a lot in the school, so I'm going in to work with Como kids. But will you be staffing somebody to go do that? I would love to. Uh, they have to go through the uh, HR application process, which I don't have. It's all it's all lined all the way through until we do the interview panel. So I actually don't have access to any of that information. It's, it's the applications that they HR screens and then it's up to us for interviews. Um, and then just on your shared measurement uh, on the slide for um, number five, are you going to be collecting data on tribal youth? Again, we don't collect specific data on, on specific youth. Um, we are looking, so we use results-based accountability for our choice grant program, however, and we are looking into modifying it and, and um, uh, going towards what's called race-based, uh, results-based accountability, where we're able to collect that demographic information um, through our choice funded agencies. So we will be able to collect that information and see what the demographics are of the youth that we are serving through that. My last one, I swear, and then I'll have another meeting with you because I'm not done. Sure. <laughs> um, um, the Choice Grant Program, I don't see any um, local Native American names there, and that's your 10 minutes. Um, so can we continue this conversation? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I had a few questions for you, Danielle. I swear I'll be quick and let you escape. Um, I'll, I'll Good job on the regional coordination. That's great to see that happening. Um, I used to serve on the Measure L board and uh, helped on the campaign for Measure H. Um, but I noticed you didn't mention the oversight board. Is that still part of your process going before them with yeah. the budget? Okay. Absolutely. Let me just give you a uh, feedback that I think you should make. I don't know if there's a public facing slideshow, but I think members of the public want to hear about that. And I can tell you from my experience that um, provides more support in the community for what you're doing. Um, so just, just a recommendation to add it in there. Um, and then uh, please give the information on the November conference to Jen or to our staff. We'd love to know about that. And then just one last question. Do you have any interaction with the in response program? Yes. Okay. So we do. We're actually modeling our crisis response team that we're going to uh, we're modeling off of in response. Okay. I'm very similar to what they're already doing with that program. Do you ever make referrals to them? Yes, we do. Okay. Yep. Great. That's it. Okay. All right. Go get your. Oh. They responded to one of our summer programs. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, all right. Unless we have any other pressing questions. Yes, Carol? Could we ask you to come back? Of course. Okay. An annual update would be great. Sure. All right. Yeah, and like I said, we had considered neighborhood services and BPP doing this one together, but decided it'd be better just to kind of introduce the BPP team. But there's going to be a lot more integration with that. So I think in, um, through different presentations, you'll hear more about it. Welcome to the family. Thank you. Yeah, go get your award. I will. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comments on that item? No. Okay, you're standing in there, Jeff, if we did. So, um, but we don't, that's great. All right, uh, so we got 8.2 off the agenda. Uh, go back to six for the director update, Ken. Is that your preference? Yes, that's fine. Great. Uh, please provide your update. 
Did we also, did we do reports on upcoming events? No, we did. Okay, so, sorry, item five. Upcoming events, yep. all right, let me jump to that. Okay, so, thank you, Chair Pitts. Um, we'll have a copy of our upcoming and accomplished events. I would just like to highlight um, our uh, next park a month. It's going to be an exciting one uh, at Olive Park and Prince Memorial Greenway. Uh, we have some heavy duty volunteers working down there already. So that's going to be a nice one to attend on Saturday, uh, September 2nd, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And um, should be nice to clean that area up. And then as far as accomplishments, I just wanted to highlight our over 300 participants at our neighborhood services in light of having our VPP team here at our Splash Bash at Ridgeway Pool. So this is free to our neighborhood services uh, members and they got a hot dog dinner, pool games and free raffle. So I wanted to highlight this is a really important thing, free opportunity we offer our neighborhood services participants and of our report. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, and then on to director updates. All right, Chair. So I just wanted to announce that we'll be changing the uh, uh, Board of Community Services schedule of um, items to consider. So for September and October, so that um, day camps are scheduled for October, uh, will be presented in September instead. And Howarth Park um, Recreation and Maintenance uh, update will be presented in October. That allows some of our staff to have the opportunity. So we're just going to switch those around. Uh, not a huge deal, but I wanted to let you know in case there was any anybody looking particular forward to one of those, you could have that information. Uh, we have been um, monitoring an invasive beetle that was reported by the Press Democrat not too long ago that's attacking uh, our native oak trees. And uh, staff were able to go to a training um, recently, and I am looking forward to receiving an update on that training and we'll be returning back to this board to um, provide information on what our plan is and what our action plan is to address this beetle um, for from a maintenance perspective so stay tuned on that um, last night the council approved the transfer of general fund reserves in the amount of two million dollars over to the Bena Valley Golf Course so that we can start the process of looking at updating a very um, uh, old, 50 year plus old uh, maintenance irrigation supply system. Uh, it's in really desperate need, really critical, so I'm really glad that they approved it. It was a huge accomplishment for us to get, um, get some investment in the golf course and improve the golf course operations. It's going to make it easier for everybody and it takes off the pressure of us worrying about the system failing suddenly. Let's see. Um, I also, on the vein of Bena Valley Golf Course, if you haven't been out there lately at the Iron and Vine Restaurant, I encourage you to attend. They have new new carpeting. Um, it's it's been it's been a minute since. I'm the new carpeting is the same carpeting they had in 2005. So, I mean, the old carpeting is from 2005. So I'm actually really excited to check it. I haven't seen it myself. Uh, I've seen pictures. It looks good. Um, so I wanted you to have that in case you're encouraged to go check it out. Um, and then uh, also I wanted to mention that uh, Sharon Wilson, we said um, goodbye to her today and her, she's retiring from the city as our recreation supervisor over neighborhood services. And Joanna Moore um, has uh, received that position as Sharon leaves and we had a nice party for her last night um, to say goodbye and thank you her for her 20 plus years. How many? 30. 30. Yeah, she's, yeah been in many, wore many hats um, at the city. And uh, we're sad to see her go, but very happy for her retirement and happy to be working with Joanna on the neighborhood services team. Um, we have, let's see, for our next council meeting on the on September 12th, uh, we have our Finley Aquatic Center going for uh, award of the construction bid, yay. We will have the, um, new Bena Valley golf cart lease going as well. And we'll be providing a recreation update to the board, the first one 
ever. I don't think we've ever done that, or if we have, it's been a long time. And then definitely, last but not least, I wanted to update uh, you that the, um, on the Southwest Greenway project, I mentioned last time that council approved the staff to move forward to purchase um, the property and uh, we are working through that with the Ag and Open Space, working, there's a lot of details to work out there. We're hoping that it will be purchased um, as the new year comes in, sometime between January and March at the very latest. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that for those of you that are interested, there is an upcoming uh, tour of the Greenway for the public on August 28th at 6 p.m. The Sonoma Land Trust is hosting this um, option and I will definitely, I'll be sending that with some of the other things you requested tonight as an email to the board members, but I wanted to announce that for everybody. They walk around the Greenway because it's still being held by Caltrans. So it's not um, it's not property we can get on, but they they do a really good job from what I've heard. I'm looking forward to attending one of these in the near future, and that is the end of my report. Thank you, Jen. Any questions for Jen from the board? All right, we'll move on to the reports from the board. I'll uh, start at the other end there. Board member Cruz, do you have any reports for this month? Um, can you come back to me? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Board Member Spence, do you have any reports? Um, I'm very excited to tell you that the Merit Awards are going to be happening in September, and since it will be before our next meeting, I want to encourage you all to come. It's September the 18th. It's right here at Finley. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful event. I can't tell you, it's very heartwarming. Bring a Kleenex. <laughs> um, it, it, it really is fabulous, and I know you all going to want to be there in the front row to clap and applaud and woo hoo mm -hmm. all the winners. <laughs> what time does that start? It starts at 7 o'clock. It's on my calendar. And it's, that's good. <laughs> we all, well, yeah. So that, that's that. And I did go to the golf course and um, and it's it looks fabulous there and Galvin Park is actually quite nice and very well used so that's why I, I kind of threw that in for my taking the tour report great thank you sure back to board okay. member Cruz thank you thank you so much um, so I haven't been to any parks um, lately but what i want to bring to the attention again is um like on my way here to this meeting lots of graffiti on um, link lane and west Ninth street uh, by the field of lincoln school um, i i don't know i i just wanted to go put up like a fake camera there or something it's just always just tagged up crazy looking makes the area just look bad um, and then also I want to invite um, everyone here in the room and on Zoom um, listening in to Dry Creek's Big Time 2023, September 16th at Dry Creek Redwood Arbor at 3288 Skaggs Springs Road, Lake Sonoma, Guys of Real California, 95441, starts at 3 p.m. Um, if anyone wants to contact Angela Cordova, uh, for vendor space or information, 707-479-8089. No drugs, no alcohol, and no pets. And please be respectful of the land. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Board Member Quant, do you have a report? Yeah, so I had actually thought I'd taken the majority of the month off. And when I started writing notes, it turns out that I haven't. Um, I was able to go to the last concert at Junior Park where uh, Dylan Black played. It was great, good turnout. Um, the weather was an interesting mis mix of, oh my God, it's hot, and wow, it's cooling down. The, um, the breeze coming off of the ocean is just a real tricky and wonderful thing this year. And uh, I am joyous that we had that series, and I'm sad to see it go. In driving around like a rather crazy person this afternoon in the heat. I went by a lot of parks and I'm proud to say, God, it's nice to see green grass. It's nice to be out from under the drought. 
the new signage at Depot Park, oh my God, great. DeMeo Park, what a joy. De Turk Park, it could look, use a little love, but I'm hoping the uh, dog park people will show up for it. I also had the opportunity to go to Rick and Ridge and spend some time in the Native Garden, the Manzanita Grove that's contained with a split rail fence. is a marvelous tribute to the fire and also to resiliency. And if you have not been up to Rick and Ridge, which is challenging to find, at least for me, um, it is worth a visit because it is a very unique city park in collaboration with... I'm going to forget the name of the, do you remember it? The Plant Society? Yeah, the, I think it is the California Native Plant Society. California, um, Milo Baker branch of the California Plant Society. It's, it's really a tribute to um, who we are as a community. Um, also, I am signed up for the UC Davis Board Beetle Seminar, which is being held specifically for foresters, but um, people, just regular people, can tune in on Zoom. And as someone who spends way too many hours at the rural cemetery, and not to make Paul feel specifically bad, we, we have to track our hours because as volunteers, the more hours you report, there's a possibility that Park and Rec can use this to obtain funding. Um, we have X number of volunteer hours, so we are not only encouraged, we are prompted on a weekly basis to report our hours to Kim Hatch, the volunteer coordinator. So I was a real slacker in the last month. I only logged about 35 hours in the rural cemetery, <laughs> and that amazes and appalls me at the same time, because I obviously have no life. Well, one of the things I wanted to say about the Rural Cemetery, other than if you didn't get your tickets to Lamplight, too bad for you because we are very sold out. Um, we have, I tooted the horn of Bob the Painter, a new volunteer who has sanded and painted literally everything. We are the best looking park in Santa Rosa, thanks to Bob the Volunteer. He looked at our 21 and a half foot flagpole, which is over 100 years old, old growth fir, was on the Elks Building downtown Santa Rosa. When that went down, it went to a ranch in Kenwood. The cemetery group repurchased it, and it's now gracing our GAR monument. So Bob the painter is doing this. Sucker could use painting. <laughs> we can't do a ladder scaffolding that's not volunteer grade so the volunteers of the rural cemetery got in touch with park maintenance and through some creativity a training session on a new member of park maintenance learned to use the boom truck at a santa rosa park and was able to paint our sand and paint our flagpole it was the most wonderful thing to see the creative partnership between a volunteer group that's working its butt off for this historic park and also park maintenance who got a little bit creative in a very timely fashion. Um, it, it, was, it was like the best of both worlds and kudos to everybody at the park and rec who allowed this to happen. Um, we're also exploring an outreach to Santa Rosa City School fourth graders to come on a field trip. And it would be under the guise of California history, fourth grade, history at your feet. Welcome to the Rural Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Board Member Lopez, do you have a report? I have a very brief one. Um, I was able to take a nice vacation to Los Angeles earlier this month to go to a concert. Um, I will say I had a lot of fun, but it was, it very much reminded me of what I like about Santa Rosa and its size and overall cleanliness. Um, so it was a fun time, but I'm glad to be back. And I really also want to take this chance to thank Julie for uh, bringing us all together. You're our new administrative assistant. And I think. Is that your title? Pardon? Well, what would be your new title? I'm an administrative secretary in the Recreation Department. Secretary. 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 Um, 
did a great job hurting us cats. Great. I had a lot of practice for seven years with city council. Yes. So. And I think, I'll be I don't think I'm a professional at that. <laughs> so I really just want to thank you and the team. Thank for you. Your I time. appreciate that. That's it. Thanks, so, Mark. Board member Boca Leone, do you have a report? Uh, not a re well, my report on Southwest Community Park is that it's being kept up beautifully. And it's so active, and I'm, I'm just very really proud of it when we have got some other ideas that I'd like to bring up later and what we could put in, also put in there that I've heard had people request, so I'll bring that up at another meeting. Uh, but I am concerned about, and I don't know if we have any information on this article that was in the Press Democrat here regarding that two mile stretch on Highway 12 that says it's going to be on the, on the east uh, portion there that's divided between, uh, oh gosh, I forgot the name of the, of the road here, but um, it's going to be developed into a park and maybe a... That's what, that's what Jen was referring to earlier, the Southeast Greenway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, we, do we have any, anything further on it? I hope it never happens because it, it should be a nice freeway all the way to Howard's Park out there. But uh, I think it, I, I just... I lived in Petaluma where we had something like that, and it was it, it was annoying as heck because of the, you know, the traffic behind your fence and you know your backyard and so on. But it would make a beautiful, nice pathway, bike way or something. But to put up parks and noise and you know it, it uh, I'm just curious if anything's coming coming up on it. Yeah, we the city's been talking about it for longer than ten years. Yes. So I will send you a lot of information and a link <laughs> good, good. to to that so you can um, get up to speed for sure. And I'll be updating the board um, as things develop out there. Because I have some friends that live on uh, what is that Cohen Cohen? I yeah, there are yeah. It does it's pretty long. It goes across I think or along Cohen. Yeah, and I have some friends that live along there, and they I told them well. I guess he didn't see the ad in the paper, and I told him about it, and they said, no way. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I think there's better things that could be done with that. Okay. All right. Thanks for the report. Board member Castillo. Uh, I have a small one, but first, shout out to board member Kwan. You always have the best updates like that. No, <laughs> You're always so active. Right. It's great. Um, <laughs> This was I, your vacation. Right? <laughs> no, it was somewhere else. <laughs> uh, I personally got to attend a uh, kid's birthday party at Hogwarts Park, and they did the thing where they rent out the area and got the tickets, the carousel tickets and the train ride tickets for the kids. Um, the parents who hosted it for their kids said it was great, and you know, shout out to the park for making that like a nice, affordable place where families can hold parties and whatnot. And a little train ride is fun, so you know, <laughs> shout out to that as well. All right, bringing back some childhood memories for me. Um, my report from this month, I did meet with someone from the Salon Sonoma Land Trust, their public policy staffer. Uh, they were interested in knowing more about the Southeast Greenway, so I've been following that in my professional life for over 10 years. So gave them some of the updates on that. Um, it will never be a freeway, Guido, so you don't, you don't need to worry about that. Um, it's been relinquished by Caltrans which they very rarely do. So it will never be a roadway. And it was supposed to be a road over Spring Lake to Oakmont uh, freeway. So that's never gonna happen. Um, and it'll be something else. Um, I also went to Juilliard Park for the music in the park and that was nice. Um, I'm, I'm really glad we do that there. And then uh, I took a vacation and I'll just mention this because it reminded me what I don't like about Santa Rosa is we have no public transit because that's all I took around Chicago. So. Um, <laughs> that was that was my reminder from vacation. But they got some great parks too. Um, and then my new parks that I visited uh, while on the board was three parks. So I kept busy on that. I went to Jennings Park, Eastside Park, and Brendan Park. All of which Brendan and Eastside are kind of in the middle of homes. Um, so not probably something we we do anymore. That sort of construction. But I'm guessing that was like surplus land or something back in the day. But anyways. Um, they're all nestled basically within people's backyards and you can access them from, from the street. Um, but older parks and 
nice place to sit peacefully. So that was my report from the month. Um, and now we're moving on to our scheduled items. Uh, so we did do 8.2 already, so we have 8.1. Um, we have our senior planner, Sherry Meads, to give us a general plan 2050 update. Well, and actually we have uh, here, yeah, here tonight, oh, okay. and, Char and Shari, but um, she is a wealth of knowledge. We've, I've been to a couple of um, meetings with her regarding the general plan, but I also wanted to preface her um, presentation tonight with a reminder to the board that uh, park staff have been very much involved in this general plan update. It's, it's a relatively significant update for recreation and parks, which is long overdue. Um, and I won't go into all of that, but I do have a map in the back of the room for those of you who are interested in looking at it that shows existing parks and proposed new parks. So that's one of the things that the general plan does is look for where we need new parks based on you know, future housing and future needs, et cetera. But I will turn it over to our expert. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> uh, good night, everyone. My name is uh, Beatriz Guerrero, uh, like Beatriz, but in Spanish. Um, I am a uh, senior planner in the um, advanced planning team, and I uh, my role is an equity and public health planner. So most of my work is focused on looking at how planning can change the quality of life of people and improve the, the uh, health of our community. And so um, I'm going to talk today about the general plan. Please stop me if there's any questions that you have at any moment during the presentation. Uh, I'll try to be as brief as possible. It's a little bit uh, long process because we've been here uh, for almost three years now uh, doing the planning, but also the community engagement. This is a community driven plan. So I've seen some of you around and events and uh, pop-ups that we have created, but um, we are, um, we're, we're putting out the word um, in the community, but also uh, honoring what the community requested us in this draft. So, you know, what we're presenting today is the draft, as Jen, as Jen mentioned. This is a, uh, a work that has been done both with community and staff members. So this has passed through all our staff in, in the city of Santa Rosa to kind of uh, conjugate both uh, community input and what the city can actually do with the staff that we have and the resources that we uh, have right now. And also, uh, due to city council's request, it's also a visionary plan that puts out dreams that on things that we don't have budget uh, for in some cases, but that we're uh, willing to work on uh, to get that budget, if, if that makes any sense. So um, if we can uh, start with the presentation, please. Thank you. So when we think about planning, we usually think about where are we going to place schools, where are we going to place buildings, where are we going to place parks, where are we going to place roads. And so uh, if we can go to the next slide, in this general plan, one of the things that we are focusing on is actually thinking about people, how people uh, can stay safe, how people can have access to education, have access to jobs, and have voice in the decisions that we're actually making in our city. So uh, just to frame how are we thinking about uh, this general plan. And if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, the general plan update, uh, we branded it as Santa Rosa Forward. Uh, this was a naming that we wanted to put because we know planning is not very popular and when people hear planning, they're like, oh, it's boring people who talk about fences and that's not what we really do. We do a lot of uh, policy work and we are really excited to uh, put it out there uh, with the community and try to translate it into easy ways to engage community members and let them know how it affects their lives. And so for us, uh, the goal of this uh, whole process has been to think about how we want to improve Santa Rosa and how we want to see it in the future. And this plan, so you know, it's a plan that will be uh, working for the city till 2050. So it's a 30 year plan. That means once it's adopted, it will be in operation till 2050. Um, so uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Our general plan process for the ones who have not been engaged in the past processes, we are right now on the draft of the general plan, but to get here, we went through many processes before. Uh, the first one was creating a, a community involvement strategy, which meant uh, we, we wanted to analyze how do we get to all our community members, all our residents, business owners, students, people who are part of the community, and then we define how we were going to reach out to communities who are usually not engaged in, in uh, planning processes and particularly focused on 10 uh, communities that uh, we consider equity priority communities. 
and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, existing conditions analysis and a vision were created. An existing condition document is basically all the demographic data on parks, data about um, emergencies, data about fires. So this document is public and it's out on our uh, website, centerosaforward.com. If you want to see any of these documents, they're all public and they're all accessible uh, for, for community members. Uh, and um, yeah, you can you can get to them in a, at, any t at any point. I'm going to point them out uh, later so you can know exactly where, where you can find them. Um, we also have um, a land use and circulation um, alternatives uh, exercise where we presented how, based on the numbers that we have of the RENA numbers, and for the people who are not familiar with the RENA, is the regional housing allocation number that is provided by the state. Uh, they give us a number of units that we have to build in a certain number of years. Uh, the cycle for our housing element is eight years. So uh, we actually had to think how in the next 30 years that we're going to accommodate the housing that is uh, the, the housing numbers that are provided by the state. So uh, based on this, uh, our consultant team helped us figure out how we we're going to distribute uh, this housing based on our vacant um, spaces, as well as uh, the opportunities that we had to develop higher density in some locations of the city. So based on this, we created these alternatives, we put them out in the community, and we asked people, how do you want the city to grow? Um, in terms of, of this uh, alternatives, we got to the point where people actually want to go uh, through, uh, want to see growth in central corridors of the city, as well as downtown. That's where the city is concentrating uh, growth. In this way, we can actually accommodate our, our um, RENA numbers, our regional housing allocation numbers. And that guided us later to the draft general plan. So based on this model of, of growth that we have for the city, as well as circulation, because once you define how housing is going to be accommodated, we define how roads and um, how different uh, circulation and transit elements are going to be supporting people to, to get to the places where they have to go. So um, last but not least, the, the, the draft, uh, which is the process that we are at right now, is a process where we actually drafted policies coming out from the community's uh, input and the model of uh, growth that we have. And that's what um, is now out there for, for public review in our community. We will have three more uh, steps, which is an environmental analysis when we define the final draft. And we will have um, zoning amendments that will come out from this from this uh, general plan update. And finally, we will have a public review and adoption uh, through city council. Uh, right now, we are going through every board and commission uh, that has any connection to general plan related matters, including uh, this, this, this board. And uh, we want to let you know that uh, we've been doing a fair amount of uh, community engagement to get to most of the residents that we can get to. And we are here too to hear any um, any other suggestions that you have for us to to join. Um, yeah, and we'll be we'll be happy to do that. If, if you want to uh, tell me now, I'm happy to take notes. But if not, uh, we'll have time for for feedback and questions. Um, so just when you say community engagement, I think of the tribal people. And so, like I was announcing the event, I would I would like. Those are places where we're at if you want us to talk to you. So I just want to extend that invite again if you don't have a lot of the local tribal people's advice or comment or we would love to come if, if we're if we're able to, to be invited to. You're invited. I'm awesome. inviting you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, uh, if we can talk later to figure Anytime. out how exactly you want us to to do the engagement, we'll be happy to come. Thank you. So, uh, just real quick, regarding, I guess, final step adoption, what is that time frame? Yeah, so uh, we're still, uh, the, this this draft is going to be uh, out there till the end of September. So we're getting um, a full two months of, of community involvement. And after that, the uh, we have to wait for winter of 2024 to get the environmental um, um, impact report and to to get there and once we have that we'll we're thinking about yeah spring spring 2024 is the adoption we're thinking about april that's 
Okay. Uh, it depends a little bit on, on how the process goes because um, the, the environmental analysis requires some feedback from the community. So we have to go back and respond to questions and uh, concerns that people have about the environmental report. So yeah, that'll be, that'll, that's, that's an estimate uh, time. Spring, summer. Correct. Okay, yes. got it. Can I ask you a question on yeah, that? Yeah, of course. If someone files a lawsuit against your environmental impact report, does that delay adopting the overall plan? Yes, okay. it does. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it, it, it could, yes. Okay. I, I also have a question, mm -hmm. and that is when the unexpected happens, and unfortunately we have had all too many, in fires, COVID, is there a giant asterisk that says all of this is subject, as you go through it, to redefinition based on unforeseen Whatever. Absolutely, and I think um, the starting point of this general plan update came from um, COVID-related matters as well as wildfires, because you will see there's a big part of, of our uh, general plan update that is connected to wildfires, and this was for us an opportunity to adjust the policies related to wildland urban interface, and you'll see uh, some interesting uh, mapping in the document too that is connected to what CAL FIRE updated, which was not uh, what we had on our previous general plan. So yes, and uh, we know something else could happen, but we were trying to stay uh, on our on, on track and, and uh, trying to hold the calendar with, that we currently have. In the case of the housing element, which was the first element that was approved on the, on the general plan update, uh, that one did have a deadline and because it was mandated by state, but the rest of the general plan update does not. And uh, this is just a budget and, and um, timeline that was established by the city. And I, I will just add, tack on to that. One of the things we looked at, because uh, one of the things that's happened after the fire is we recognize that some places that we thought were gonna be one thing have now turned into something different. And it would be great to have a public park to support you know, the new community, the new idea that's coming there. So we looked at the, when you look at the map, you can see that they put parks in places or recommending parks in places where you don't need a park right now, but if anything should change with the land use or with the type of housing that's there, we want to be ready for that so that there is a nexus, there is a requirement for a park to, to be there. And when they finish, when the housing element is done, one of the things we look at with parks is understanding the density. We want to make sure that we're putting parks forward based on not only geographical location, but the density of the housing. So it's really important that the housing element was done so we understand what is coming and we could prepare and put parks where they should be based on those two things as well. So thank you, Dan. Yeah, that's, that's a really <laughs> great addition. Um, and if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, I mentioned uh, previously that we had um, a lot of, of reports that are out there in our website. So you can find uh, the community involvement strategy, the existing conditions report. Uh, this is a great document if you want to like play trivia or help your kids do homework. <laughs> this has information related to Santa Rosa that you might not find anywhere else and it's pretty updated. So uh, very useful in case you want to find information connected to any type of demographic, uh, any, any type of geographical uh, information. Just so you know, uh, and I think it might be useful for, for the work that you guys do. Um, the briefing book, which is basically a summary of what we found in this in this huge existing condition report document, we wanted to make a simple uh, version of this for community members who don't want to read 400 pages and <laughs> might just uh, be interested on knowing the highlights. Uh, we also included uh, in August 2021 um, a vision statement that was created by community members. Uh, we have to be very honest in this uh, community mission was built during the pandemic. So we had a really hard time doing engagement other than online and trying to do alternative ways of, of outreach. So uh, we still believe there's a very strong um, vision and we're satisfied with what we got, but uh, it, we, we actually have it. So you can see it here and we can go to the next slide, please. And we wanted to share with you because um, uh, for us, this is something that is uh, guiding the whole process of the general plan. So I'm just going to read it so community members can also hear it. Santa Rosa is a diverse, equitable, and sustainable community built on civic engagement that empowers everyone to provide and support equal and affordable opportunities to obtain good housing, education, and jobs, to enjoy vibrant cultural events and arts, and to lead healthy lives in resilient neighborhoods that adapt to social and environmental change. So uh, this is this is what the community built, and then we what we put together after hearing uh, the input of, of our community members. And if we can go to the next slide, please. 
Um, and I'm going to stop just a little to get any questions that you have about the project so we can go a little bit deeper into um, the elements and the part that is more relevant for today's meeting, which is uh, parks. The, the uh, comment I'm going to make is traffic. I think somebody is not planning right because the traffic is getting so bad around Hearn Avenue, Santa Rosa Avenue, down when you want to go to Costco, all in that area there, and south of, uh, of Hearn, where they built that 500 unit that's going to be opening soon, past uh, Smart and Final. I don't know where, if there's one, one car to one unit, which they're probably leaving two, there's going to be a thousand cars. There's no place to park them all. There is no. They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be parking all over the place, and there, again, I have brought this up before that there's no park there. Or if there's one child in every one of those rooms, that's 500 kids, and they're going to be playing in the street or playing at the shopping center a parking lot, and then we're going to have problems there too because they'll be doing the wrong thing. Some of them. So it, it's to me, it's like. We need tax revenue, so let's build, 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 but we're not thinking about the people and, and, and the children and where they're going to go to school and so on. Even school buses going up and down, they turn the red lights on, you know, and everybody block up the traffic like crazy, and it's going to be more of it. I mean, it's just, uh, I, they, there, and there's plenty of space if you go out on Petaluma Hill Road and over and so on, there's a lot of places where it would be more spread out, but you're really congregating a lot of in areas where it should be for shopping and that type of thing, so you can get in, get out, and go and so on. And then putting up all those buildings, those those apartment complexes is just even Santa Rosa Avenue now, they've got a big one down there on fifth or sixth, whatever it is, street on on fourth street there. And where are those kids gonna go play? They're going to be running back and forth across the street to, to the, uh, it was that Jew, not Jewel Yard, it's uh, that park across the street there. I mean, it's, it's, it's just not, plan to me, it's not being planned right. And a lot of people are complaining. We go down Hearn Avenue and I want to go to, up, to, up to Santa Rosa Avenue to, to the Costco or, or someplace there. And the traffic at, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon is backed up to Southwest Community Park. And you, it takes you 15 minutes to get up to the to go to the overpass. I mean, it's let me let me provide one uh, on the Hearn Avenue one, Guido. They are improving that freeway overcrossing, so the city just got funding to improve that and make it a lot better. That is something Council Member Alvarez helped do. So right. that is on that. Maybe Beatrice, it should could... have been started before when they knew this was going to happen. Okay, they wait until after, and then everything's jammed up, and then finally maybe maybe, maybe explain that idea of planning around corridors and how that's going to work. Yeah, yeah, and I think I, I want to explain a, a fair amount of of, uh, of the um, questions that we had because I think we had traffic, we had parks, we had kids. Uh, in relationship to traffic, I think one of the main things that we want to do with this plan, and this is connected also with climate change, is get people out of their cars. And I know this is difficult uh, because of uh, how transit is right now, but it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. We need density to get transit to be able to operate in, in our corridors. So I agree, uh, I agree 100%. But with the transit, please try when they put it in, please try to provide a place where they can pull off the traffic, where they load and unload instead of out in the middle with their four ways going and everybody's got to stop behind them. And, and then you try, everybody's trying to get around them. They really need to pull over. And this is a, I mean, we do have it like on Stony Point, a few good spots there. And they, they need to do more of that. Welcome, Eddie Vegas, to the uh, Transportation and Public Works team, for, for sure. Uh, and uh, in relationship to that, we also are uh, thinking, and I'll, I'll put a map uh, after after we pass the questions. Uh, we're, we know Santa Rosa is a very big city, so the idea of a 15 walking, 15-minute uh, walk uh, distant city is not achievable for us. So what we are thinking about is uh, complete neighborhoods. Um, complete uh, areas where people can actually get access to services, schools, uh, and different opportunities of jobs in the same location of, of housing. And this is an idea that um, 
has been uh, pushed by other cities and other um, states. But we know because of the size of our city, at a complete uh, city is not going to be uh, something achievable. So we're thinking about complete neighborhoods. And you'll see the, the policies and maps that we have in connection to that. So we, yes, we know um, a lot of the housing is going to bring more density. But we're also expecting that to bring more transit to, to the city. And this is this is a high level plan. We we'll still have to work with each of the teams to be able to figure out the prex um, situation, uh, specifically in relationship to Santa Rosa Avenue. We are uh, we just got funding to start a South Santa Rosa specific plan. So that will be an area that we'll be focusing on particularly. So uh, stay tuned because we're, we're just uh, about to start. That's actually our plan for, for the beginning of, of January. So we are trying to finish this plan on time so we can start South Santa Rosa specific plan, which would fall under the umbrella of the general plan. But uh, thank you for the comments. We really appreciate it. And uh, I think we're, we're working toward those objectives too. So we, we really appreciate the, the Not only because I'm driving it all day, you know, every day. <laughs> we also want you out of your car, but it'll take us like. Madonna and then Carol. Have, and let me just say, there are about 10 more slides for Beatrice to show us, but go, go ahead with your questions. Um, I just want to say thank you. And um, I just want to help you um, connect to my um, Native American community. Um, I know it's hard for, um, them to just talk to somebody they don't know, but I would love to connect you to that to get their advice input. Um, and and concern for me um, is just safety of youth in the streets. Um, it's not very safe out there, or persons with disabilities as well, um, just because of the scary things that I see um, and the very mean drivers that are out there. Um, so thank you very much. And I wrote my information. Thank you. And I have to go to another meeting, so I have to leave right now. I'm going to take her with me. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Madonna. Thank you. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Carol, did you have a question or a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to check in with the county just this week, weighing in and approving, expanding, um, unincorporated um, mandatory state mandated uh, housing much of which will be surrounding Santa Rosa. Is your group working hand in hand with those projects since they'll all be interrelated? Uh, which projects can you? Can you uh, so uh, the uh, Tuesdays? The approval of the housing oh, element. The housing oh. element. Correct. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you in partnership with the county as they oh. move forward with and it's similar no, I don't know. These would be unincorporated areas oh. if the counties. We're not. Know. It's it's right now. We work with the county uh, in terms of, of uh, planning for for the numbers of units, and that happens before the allocation of the regional uh, numbers. Now, uh, we're, I don't think we are, and I would I can get back to you specifically on on the properties or the areas that we're talking about if you want uh, specific it's, information. It's more important that you understand it than I understand it. No, I, I, I get it. I just, uh, we have a separate uh, team that does all the specific um, development review work. So I, I can speak for the work that they're that they're actually doing. But, but there's a partnership in understanding the work with the county. Yeah, I mean, we, we do work with the county. We collaborate with them in a lot right. of different topics. So, but, but I don't know if you were talking about specific properties. So that's, that's no, what I wasn't. Was. OK, awesome. Just the ones uh, bumping up against Santa Rosa. Got you. Okay. Continue on. Thank you. So if there's no more questions, um, I just want to show you how the, the JAR plan is organized. And we can talk a little bit about the details if you're interested. If not, I would just uh, walk you through the plan. And I would invite you to review as deep as you want to do. And uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so you know, this, as I mentioned, is the, the draft of the Santa Rosa General Plan uh, 2050. If we can go to the next slide. And this plan has uh, our context, context, contents organized in elements, which is what the state requires. There are actually eight elements that are uh, mandated by the state of California, which are the ones that you will see in green. So that for us would be uh, land use, it would be circulation, it would be open space, um, it's uh, noise, safety, housing, and environmental justice, which is the last and uh, most new uh, element because uh, this comes from SB 1000 and was updated in 2013. And so around 25 or 26 jurisdictions have an environmental justice element. We would be one of the uh, 
new jurisdictions adding it. Um, the requirement for this element is that any time that you update more than two elements, you actually have to create an environmental justice element. So this new uh, plan includes this, this element now. And you will see that we added other elements that community members requested or that our staff was interested in including, which actually includes parks because parks was uh, was something that is not mandate, man, mandated but by the state, but that we actually wanted to, to include and that was important for, for our team. So you know our plan is organized in goals, then policies, and then actions. So um, this, this is the, the three levels of, of planning that the city has. The general plan, as I, um, as I mentioned before, is a general plan, so we don't have specific details in here. This is just policy that mandates the rest of the city um, actions and decisions. So um, when you think about it, if you want to see very specific things in here, this is not specifically, this is not the right place for that. But uh, when you review the policies, just think about how decision makers and how city council makes decisions and if this would be a guide that you would like to have for them and if there's anything that you would add or like to take away from, from here. Uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide, please. So this is our equity priority areas. Um, if you are familiar with Plan Bay Area 2050, uh, what we got from them is two variables that are really relevant uh, for them in terms of where are we prioritizing uh, our investment in terms of infrastructure? And this, I, these are areas that were redlined. I'm sure you're familiar with this term, but if you're if you're not, uh, those are areas that were underinvested because of the lack of uh, government support and the lack of loans provided by the state uh, to have property owners in those areas. So um, there's two variables that uh, create this layer of the mapping. Uh, one is the lowest income census uh, blocks in the in the county, and the second is the areas with the highest concentration of people of color. So um, those are the census tracts. Additionally, we added to uh, one more layer, which is the color virus screen uh, layer, which means the areas that are most highly polluted in the state. This is the, 20, the 75th percent of pollution in California. And we have those, uh, we have two, and those are in the Southwest uh, community area. Um, those, that, that map was created uh, with the purpose of identifying specific policies that we want to prioritize in this uh, particular locations, uh, including uh, thinking about uh, how we allocate budget uh, in terms of improving infrastructure, which means also bike lanes, sidewalks, and parks. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. The other uh, layer that we created is called areas of change, and this is connected to the conversation that we were having before in relationship to how we create complete neighborhoods. And so these are the areas where community members and uh, planning staff in the city identify areas that require uh, creating additional, um, additional services, additional housing, uh, additional infrastructure. Each area has different needs, but we want to create areas in this uh, in the spaces where people can actually walk and bike or um, just uh, go around without having to use a car and use transit too, and uh, be able to get access to all the things that they need on a daily basis. So uh, you can see we have uh, plenty of areas, but they're mostly focused on the central corridors of the city. Uh, the only one that might not be uh, in that space is actually Oakland. They actually want to create a mixed uh, use area where they can actually have access to services too. So um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, just so you know what is the content of the, of the uh, general plan, uh, we have the land use and economic development. The change in this, in this element was actually uh, integrating land use and economic development because we know that jobs and uh, access to, to jobs is very connected to housing and we want to create this connection. So uh, that's, that's how we shifted this, uh, this, this element. And there's a lot of, of new things uh, in, in here, including uh, the addition of community gardens on, on every, um, on every uh, land use, as well as having access to, to uh, more mobile um, businesses and, and having uh, new new spaces to to let people be creative about how they do business in, in, in the city. So if we can go to the next slide, please. And I'm being very general because I know we have a lot of slides and I want to uh, respect the time that we have allocated for this presentation. Uh, in, You're doing great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the circulation, open space, conservation, and green gas uh, reduction element. This is a huge element. It has a lot of policy included. Um, open space that is 
a little bit connected to parks, but I wouldn't say this is the core of our of our interest for 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 the meeting of today. However, one of the important things uh, to know is that we have a greenhouse uh, gas reduction strategy included in this general plan. So uh, all the actions that uh, we we used to have separately are now included in this plan because for us it's something that has to be. Uh, intersecting with all the actions that the city is doing. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, a, a, an additional element that is focused on urban design, historic preservation, arts and culture. Uh, this is something that uh, we thought was extremely relevant because the community feels very uh, proud of, of the things that Santa Rosa has in terms of arts and culture, as well as historic preservation. So this is basically uh, focusing on, on, those, uh, on those topics. If we can go to the, to the next slide, please. Uh, we have, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a safety, climate, resilience, noise, and public services and facilities um, element. This element contains a new mapping of the wildland urban inter interface as well as the uh, Cal Fire maps that were um, updated recently. So uh, this, this, um, this, this chapter uh, includes some new ideas that would actually uh, can make us the first city in, in the state that would be retreating for, from the uh, wildland urban interface. That means maybe exploring the idea of buying properties that are in this area so we don't have to expose our firefighters and our uh, emergency services to have to go into these areas when they um, face uh, fire risk. So uh, these are some of the, of the things that we're uh, exploring in this, in this type of, of uh, policy. And this is out to the public so that we can get feedback and understand if community members feel um, that this is something that uh, that they want the city to do. If we can go to the next slide. Um, the last, but I think the most important for, for today's meeting is the health equity and environmental justice element. This is where you will find uh, parks. Oh, uh, if we can go to the previous one, sorry about that. Oh, okay, I guess we don't have it in here. I apologize for that. I, I do have it in my printed version, but um, number six is health equity and environmental justice. And since we don't have it here, I just want to tell you what is included in here. As you probably know, we have a partnership with uh, Kaiser Permanente, and this uh, this grant uh, that was provided to the city of Santa Rosa was actually provided for us to intersect uh, a health uh, policy for the whole city. And what we decided was that we were going to create a health element connected to our environmental justice uh, element since these two topics are extremely connected since pollution and uh, built environment are actually very relevant uh, social determinants of health for our community. So uh, we joined these three topics in, and we thought equity was actually pretty connected because as you can see, the areas that are low income and that are um, majority people of color are actually the areas in the city that are most disinvested. So this is heritage of, of um, previous policies that happened throughout uh, the 30s and the 70s and that we're being inherited with, but that we actually want to change and that we are actually want to create policy to shift to a better uh, place. And so uh, that's what this element has. And to some of the questions that were asked before, I uh, also want to mention that we have a violence prevention uh, part on the general plan, as well as uh, the parks, um, the parks, uh, a chapter and goal that uh, is including 16 policies connected to parks. So that's basically the general description of, of what is included in, in the general plan. I hope this uh, cuts your, catches your, your attention and makes you want to go deeper and explore what, what the policies are in here because there are plenty and I don't think we have enough time to review all of them. But um, just so you know, we, we have a survey going on and a QR code that uh, gets us to a bilingual um, survey that uh, can be responded by community members if they don't want to read the, the whole plan but want to give us um, their opinion on the main policies that we think are the most controversial ones, uh, including the ones that I've mentioned before. But for example, uh, banning um, drive throughs which is uh, something that is connected to our climate uh, action uh, plan, as well as uh, reducing our, our um, emissions and um, accomplishing other purposes in terms of reducing our uh, vehicle miles travel. So um, you can provide feedback through this, uh, through this process. We are also hosting workshops. We have hosted two. We are hosting one, of, uh, one on each quarter of the city. We still have two more left. Uh, one is going to be on the 30th uh, in um, 
the uh, Brinken Valley Library at 5 p.m. On, on the 30th, and uh, we are hosting another one on the 31st at Latina Service uh, Providers Office, and that's going to be up at 5.30 on the 31st uh, of, of August. After that, we're hosting um, an online uh, open house, which would be on September 13th, and we're popping out, uh, or we're popping uh, with our maps and all our surveys and all the, all the documents that you just uh, saw today on the screen uh, in all of the community events that we get uh, from our from our city, uh, from our community partners. And we're trying to be out there because we know people usually don't come to boards or city council or commission. So we're, we're trying to literally go everywhere. We've uh, done, uh, we have planned more than uh, 30 events where we're attending and providing information to people. We have we're hosting five, uh, well, six events uh, ourselves, and we have planned more than 15 pop-ups around the city in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any other invitations besides the ones that I got from uh, board member Cruz, uh, I'll be very happy to to take your requests and try to figure out if we can make it to, to your event. So thank you so much. And uh, if we can go to the next slide. Um, and I just want to open the, the space for questions, discussions, feedback that you have on the things that we've mentioned. And of course, we know you probably might need more time to review the document, but just so you know, this is all in, in our website. If you want to provide very specific feedback, we have an app called Conveyo, which is basically a PDF where you can underline, make comments, and provide feedback directly in the document that is public and that we will download and analyze once the outreach process is over. So thank you very much for your time, and I'll be very happy to take any questions that you have. Did you, say, you said there were, we could pick up a, a booklet or whatever is there, of the, all that information? Yeah, if you if you are interested in, on getting one of the, of the uh, documents, yeah, we're, we're, we'll be happy to, to bring it to you. And they're also uh, available on our website if you prefer a PDF. Whatever works better, we can we can get you, get you a physical document or... Where do you, you have with that? Can I can buy and pick one up? Yeah, I mean, if you if you want this one, I am very happy to leave it. Um, Great. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to have one. Yeah, you can love me all the policies. Beautiful job. I don't know how you remember all that. <laughs> Carol, do you have a question? And then Paul. I do. This is probably, gosh, I don't know how many of your presentations. Um, I can remember uh, going to a city council forum and there was a huge map on CHOP's floor. That was this, yes. correct? Yes. So this is probably my fourth or fifth, and I'll be here again tomorrow morning for waterways. 50% of what you said, right over my head. Um, I know you know what you're talking about, and you're very engaged. I consider myself a rather informed person. I don't know how much the general public is able to absorb process and truly give you feedback on at this level. Is this something, and I don't know, does anyone else kind of feel a little? That's why I want a copy of that. <laughs> does anyone else feel at all overwhelmed, or yes, you guys yes, are 100%? Yes. I appreciate that comment because I was actually going to compliment her on not doing that. And so I think that that's a good perspective to provide, Carol. Yeah. Um, and there are some simple things, like I was looking at slide 11, which is a map. If you could go back to slide 11. Now, I lived in Santa Rosa. Uh, next slide, please. I've lived in Santa Rosa pretty much my whole life. I don't know what some of these neighborhoods are because there's no street names. If you put something identifying the neighborhood, I'd have a clue. Think, think you, you know what you're talking about. The people who live in Santa Rosa don't have this level of knowledge that you do, and you want to inform us. You have to, I worked in the textbook industry for college level. Writers were told to write at the eighth grade level for college students because that was something they could absorb. You're conducting a master's class. I'm in junior high school. I appreciate very much the comment. And if 50% of the information actually stayed in i feel very grateful because <laughs> we know we know this is very overwhelming and i totally understand what you're saying and we've been doing a lot of efforts at different levels to have different types of conversations um i actually brought uh one of the 
samples of things that we have been doing. So this is for, for um, kids that are um, in elementary school and we, uh, we got this, this uh, bilingual books uh, coloring books from one of our local artists. This is a partnership where we actually explain to kids like what planning is like and kind of uh, try to involve them, asking them what they like about their neighborhood, you know. So you're, you're totally right. And we're trying to, to make different efforts. So we have another partnership uh, with um, artists who are helping us uh, do trainings in poetry and kind of like getting input through that way. So. Um, we have different levels of engagement for different groups of people. And the survey that we have is kind of like a very simple survey where you don't have to read anything, but you can provide your opinion about like the most relevant policies. And um, the, the problem with the, with the general plan um, amount of information is that we're mandated by state of the things that we have to include. So we do our best effort to try to explain uh, the things that are key for community members. There's some others that are just uh, state requirements that we absolutely have to, to comply with, and that it's they're hard to to bring down to 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 earth in some ways, and even for planners. So I, I just uh, want to be very very honest. But yeah, you're totally right. And if you think, um, I mean, arranging the, the the street names, and you will see it when we bring the huge maps. It's way easier to see it in the screen. It's just like really hard to do it but just just so you know if you go into our electronic documents you can zoom in as much as you can and you'll see the, the names of the streets because the quality of our mapping is pretty good so uh, i hope that helps in in terms of looking at it not printed i've tried to fill out the survey at least twice already i've given up in frustration both times is it it is so daunting the level of reflection you want me to do that is so above my pay grade um, I, I do not feel, uh, not intelligent, I do not feel equipped to weigh in with any kind of, not even authority, with a, a usable comment. I, I've given up because I've been overwhelmed. And maybe that's because I want to do a really good job. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. And if you want us to chat and have a conversation like, with more detail about what things you would like to like adjust, we'll be happy to do that. Has, has anyone else made that kind of comment that this is overwhelming for the lay person? Uh, I think we have done a lot of surveys with communities, so we are there to explain exactly the changes that are coming out from the general plan. We're kind of doing a guided survey. Um, and, and for some people, we, we just leave it there. But when we do the pop-ups and we went uh, out uh, with the community, we bring our tablets and we have conversations with people, show the maps around, and have like a more uh, interactive uh, survey fill-in, if that makes any That's sense. Good. So uh, yeah, but if you, if you want to do that with us, we'll, we'll be very happy to do it. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, and park staff will be at the other meetings that are not the pop-ups or specifically at the, the open meetings, houses. But the, the open houses, thank you. We'll be there as well. We bring our map. We're there for questions to really drill down. We've got a lot of information. It, it is daunting. I appreciate it. But the, the takeaway is that this is the document that we rely on heavily when we do anything in parks and recreation. So this is the time to, um, to dig in. And um, even if you just want to tell us or Beatrice or something, we can pass along information about things that you've been thinking of that would be great. And, and we can help determine if it's something that needs to go to the general plan or maybe something for a future specific plan um, as well. We'll do our best to help as much as you want, but it, I completely agree with you. <laughs> it can be really daunting to look at everything all at once. But we appreciate your comments. Yes. Yes. We really do. And, and this is absolutely something that we've we've tried and it's it's something that we have in mind. So we're, we're, we're there with you and we want to do better. So if you have any ideas on how we can do better, we're very happy to, to hear them and work with you. Any other questions? Paul, you had a question? Yeah, it's like kind of more of a, I guess, general question. The concept of, and I understand some of this is state mandated, so, but the concept of uh, environmental justice, that just seems um, good, right? But that seems to be a very broad, concept and distilling it into a general plan i guess how is it articulated and what does that look like and when you're trying to implement it yeah so the definition of the of the state for 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 this is kind of providing um spaces that are healthy and uh that people have access to in a, in a similar way for everyone no matter race 
uh, ethnicity, country of origin, language spoken, um, you know, kind of, of having this, this access to healthy environments. And uh, the policies that are included in, in the document, the way that we translate it is kind of uh, putting more attention to specific areas that have higher levels of pollution and figuring out what type of policies we can create to improve not only uh, the reduction of, of pollution, but infrastructure to uh, prevent uh, creating uh, additional uh, burdens or uh, improving uh, or reducing the amount of industrial land that we have on those areas, because a big part of it is highways, um, the, the one that uh, the things that pollute uh, air quality, but also we have land uses that are less um, uh, less healthy for for those areas. So try to try to compensate what what has happened on on those specific areas of the city, and that's how we translate it, uh, the the definition of environmental justice. The additional part that I want to mention is participation of communities that have never been involved in in the planning processes. So decision making uh, in the past and the reason that. Um, red line areas ended up with all the industrial um, zoning has to do with the fact that communities were not asked if they wanted uh, industrial lands or other land uses in their uh, in their neighborhoods. They just had to deal with it. And I think a big part of this is um, involving communities leaving those areas that are already overburdened by, by different uh, pollution um, uh, indicators to be part of the, the conversation about how they want this to be changed. And so community engagement is a huge part of, of, of the, of the uh, part that we are including on environmental justice. I hope that answered the question, Nick. I don't know if it did. No, it, it really does. And then it just raises a host of other questions, right? Because if you remove that, the industrial areas, it's like, well, where are these jobs? Like, exactly. We're not that trying, community typically works in those industrial the, fields. The idea is to, to figure out where you place housing and where you place um, industrial uh, um, areas and um, how you can, for example, one of the policies that we have is separating housing uh, 300 feet from, from the highway or doing additional um, like uh, measures to prevent their, the bad air quality entering into the housing. So there, there's different ways where we can find a middle point where we don't take away jobs, but we also have um, the health of the community protected in a different way. That's very tough. And parks, parks is a, a really good uh, measure, and that's why they're included in environmental justice. Because you know, there's this whole idea about the amount of, of park uh, space that you need per capita to have a healthy environment. So that's that's what we're working with in terms of, of, uh, of parks too. So yeah, that's this is why this is a great space for us to have this conversation too. But thank you for the question. Any other questions from the board? I had a few questions. Um, when does the South Santa Rosa specific plan process begin? Um, our um, request for proposals is already out. So we're planning to start by the beginning of next year. OK, great. Um, and echoing uh, one of our board members, I, and Parks will be a part of that, I assume? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Great. Um, this is kind of more general. I didn't know this has parks always been a part of the public health component of a plan of a, a general plan, or is that a newer so it, uh, section? Health is not a mandated element. It's okay. an element that we decided to include because it was complementary to environmental justice and equity. Um, other cities have it there. It's kind of something very new as I mentioned that there's around like pro probably less jurisdictions that have a health element so we would be one of the few ones uh, getting this this element in there parks has been in some of them um, I would say um, uh, the analysis of social determinants of health definitely includes green space as one of the very relevant things for people's health so yes that's that's why it's included in here okay um, you said I think it was slide the element five, the one that involved the wildfire mapping. Mm -hmm. The CAL FIRE maps you referred to, I don't think those have been finalized yet. Is that They haven't been finalized, but we're including the um, the wildlife urban interface maps, which are okay. the um, similar maps, uh, just uh, we're missing the, the newest CAL FIRE maps, but they will be included and updated once they're finalized. Okay, and maybe this is, maybe I'm just, I have a wording question, I guess, next. So 
you talked about buying properties in the wildland urban interface to um, prevent future damage, basically. Most people refer to that as managed retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you use that term in there? Yes. Okay. I just didn't use it here, so I uh, got it. I, okay. I was trying to be better in, in, in my wording. Could you give an example of one of those properties? Because that was part of the right over my head. <laughs> uh, no, I can't. Uh, because this is just something that we're going to explore. This is this is a policy to try to figure out if we can do this this work and how community feels about it. So we don't have any properties. Could you uh, make up an example of what it would be? Uh, yeah, Oakmont is one of the um, examples because that area is specifically on the well and urban interface. Did so. you say Oakmont? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Well, I encourage you to continue that work. That'll be very difficult politically okay. and in the public, but... Uh, That's what we want to hear from the community. So Yeah, yeah. good. That's great. Um, good luck. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, did we have any other comments or questions from the board? Any public comment on that item? So I will just say one last thing. I was gonna say the exact opposite of what Carol said. So I think this is an interesting examination of how different people see this, because I'm like a planning nerd. Um, and I was like, wow, she's using like, saying environmental impact report instead of EIR. So I thought you were good about not using acronyms, um, but some of the terminology is just not general, you know, English language usage. So um, that was an interesting observation from both of us. I, I didn't use manage to retreat, so I thought I got an extra point yeah, from that. Good job. <laughs> no one knows what that means. Um, and it sounds kind of scary anyway. So uh, we need a better term for that. But um, I think this is great. And uh, like I said, I'm a planning nerd, so this is really cool that we have such a great document. Um, maybe figure out different ways to socialize it out and have people understand it at different levels. Um, and I also was gonna say, you came to one of our park cleanups once, the one in Rincon Valley. And uh, I've seen you at other things like the Wednesday night market, I think. So that's great. Um, keep up that stuff too and going where the people are. Um, I think that's it. I could talk about planning for a while, but. I would also like to make a comment. Of course. I have actually been a part of this process for a while, from the very beginning, so it was hard for me to figure out how easy it was to understand. I will not uh, make a comment on that. I have seen a lot of the work that you have faced and so much of the department have put into it, so I do want to just acknowledge that they've done a lot of work for this. Um, and as someone who has been in the process and then for my job has had to look at this a lot, um, it is very, very interesting. So if you have time and you have points of interest like uh, traffic circulation, like parks, to definitely take time and look at it. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. Uh, yesterday we had a partnership right here in this room uh, with the Food System Alliance. They created a partnership with us to have host a specific uh, open house connected to only food access. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole uh, chapter related to, to food access in, in our general plan, which was an interest of, of the community too. So, I mean, there's different topics that are probably uh, less um, Less, less complicated or less, less technical. Overwhelming. Less That's overwhelming. Less overwhelming. Uh, but that community is interested in, and uh, we were, we were expecting to have these partnerships with different organizations, and we had, fortunately. And so we are very grateful to community members who have given us that opportunity to, to partner and, and have this discussion. So, yeah, thank you. I hope uh, you invite us to other events, and we'll be happy to reach out to the programs too. And I loved your maps. So. <laughs> thank you. Um, Great. Any any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you for the presentation very much. Thank you for having me, and thank you for your questions and feedback. So thank you. Yeah. Can we take a break. I want to get the book from her. <laughs> um, we're almost at the end, but if you could give that to the staff. Do you need a break, Leah? No. I, okay. I we're almost done. Don't worry. Um, we'll be done in a few minutes. Jen's got it for you, and they give those out too in the community. Like at their boots, they have at the Wednesday. I have one that I got from one of their boots. So, um, yeah, they're out there, but we have one for you. So, great. Uh, we will move on to uh, agenda item nine committee reports. 
Uh, update from the mayor's lunch. Well, that's happening tomorrow for the first time uh, in 2023. So, yeah, not taking me anywhere. Going to City Hall, sadly. But um, I think it, it was Julie who got the good food last time. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully we get good for lunch. I'll come. Uh, last time we had Indian food. That was great. That was better than just sandwiches. Um, nothing against Fourth Street Deli. Hopefully we have something great again. I, I hope so. I would like to have the report back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll provide that at the next meeting. Um, so just to, as a reminder for folks, that's the all the board chairs come together and meet with the mayor once a month. Um, mayor Rogers hasn't convened it yet, so we're looking forward to doing that with her tomorrow. Uh, 9.2, Santa Rosa Waterways Advisory Committee. Carol, is there any uh, update for that? There was a field trip last week out to, Col last month out to Colvin Reach. I'm going to say two, which was fascinating because it seems like every time I blink, uh, Southwest Santa Rosa has expanded yet again. Um, it seems like only yesterday, LC Island High School was an island unto itself. It is no longer an island. Oh, yeah. The good news <laughs> is that Parks is looking ahead and securing land. The Colgan Reach originally um, originally was a creek which was channelized, which is returning to a creek, and it is now being managed for the 100-year flood rather than the 50-year flood. And going on this field trip with hands-on with um, Steve Grady, who's um, one of the leads in the Creeks program, just getting great knowledge of both native plants, interacting with other um, agencies, planning for the future. And my favorite part of all was a woman on a bicycle came up and said, we need more doggy bags here. <laughs> there are creek stewards out in the hinterlands volunteering and working. The we're all in this together nature of that field trip was so impactful. Um, I, I think field trips are the best for all boards. And tomorrow, we have another presentation of the <laughs> uh, uh, one we just got here, which will emphasize more of the creeks. And I will try not to be as overwhelmed, though I cannot guarantee it. All right, thank you. I like the idea of a future field trip. I want to write that down. Um, thank you, Carol. Uh, take that trolley. Take Rosie the trolley around? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> maybe a trip to the future Southeast Greenway or something like that. Um, just to give Jen more work. Uh, but yeah, great idea. I love field trips too. Um, and now we are on to 9.3, the BOCS Governing Document Subcommittee. Uh, we did not meet two weeks ago, um, so we've had one meeting of that since it reconvened. Uh, basically, we're just trying to make our ordinance a little tighter. We got feedback from the city manager's office that it was a little uh, lengthy, more than what they wanted. It used some terminology that um, crosses over into what some other departments basically do. Um, so they just want us to tighten it up a bit. We still eventually will be the Rec and Parks Board or Park and Rec Board, if that's a uh, what the city decides to do, but we're going to be whatever that name is with board at the end um, after we're done and, of course, fix our quorum. So we're meeting again, I think, next week. Yeah. Um, so we'll have more on that. Um, and then uh, number 10, uh, Deputy Director Santos, do we have any written or electronic communications? We have received none. Great. Uh, thank you. And on to item 11, are there any uh, future agenda items? Are there any future agenda items anyone would like to see? Yeah. The one that you just mentioned. Hold on, look, Carol's I'm first, sorry. and then we don't. Um, I know it's probably still a work in progress, but City Council did pass the um, change in homelessness in the parks in Santa hmm. Rosa. And when the department has a better handle on how that either is being rolled out or will be rolled out. I think it would be um, good to um, provide us with that information. 
Are you talking about the camping ordinance? Okay, yeah. And so council did the second, they approved the second reading of that. So it should be rolling forward soon. Great. So there's no camping in the parks? Is that what it is? Or we will allow So there's a step. What I can do is send you all the ordinance so you can look through it. But uh, there's available steps for making sure we don't have excessive you know, potentially excessive camping in certain places. There's steps the city can take um, to help those that are unhoused find our temporary housing locations between the city and the county. Um, and that it can help um, alleviate the um, huge encampments we've seen in the past in parks because they have done a, a fair amount of damage uh, when there's a lot of campers in certain spots. So. Um, there's a lot of outline in there for um, for the city to be uh, a little bit more proactive in providing services uh, to the unhoused, and uh, hopefully that'll be a benefit to the parks. That's the that's the goal, and to other public spaces. Because the city has done a lot to try to uh, provide spaces in conjunction with the county for those that are unhoused. So I'll bring that. Um, I'll, I'll get you all a copy of that and we can bring some more information. The city used to have an ordinance that banned all camping and there was a Ninth Circuit court decision that made that. Uh, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, so that's just basically the response to that four yeah. years later to craft a new camping ordinance. Got it. Yep. Um, I figure you know that being of council. So, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of cities are doing that. So, um, I agree. That, that'd be a great thing to learn in the future. Uh, Guido, did you have something? What was the meeting that you said you were going to tomorrow? Uh, I Carol said she's going to a meeting. No, oh, no, the, the mayor's luncheon. luncheon for board chairs. Okay, though, then there was another one. How was under 93? Um, the, gov the document subcommittee, the subcommittee meeting that we have next week. And that was regarding? That's, that's the subcommittee oh, yeah, that's we the formed one. to update our ordinance. Yeah. When, when is that meeting? I'd like to attend it. Yeah, I, attend it. I mean, yeah, I guess you could. Well, no, then we'd reach a quorum. Yeah, you can't attend because we'd have to do it as a Brown Act meeting and take public comment. Um, okay. It's pretty dry stuff. It's we're updating an ordinance, you know, um, that's on Monday. That's one of the ones I think I worked on bringing it up. Uh, I mean, if you have thoughts, you can, you can you can share them. I mean, 9.3 would have been the time, but if you have it now, that's fine. Do you have any suggestions? No, I just was going to, if there was going to be a separate meeting for that, I would have liked to, would have liked to attend it. We can't have you attend, though, because okay. as a member of this board, that would make it a committee, which has not been officially formed. Okay. So I'm sorry. Okay. Lawyers, law ruined that. Not lawyers, the law. But, uh, uh, Lawyers are crafted. Yeah, um, but we can, we'll give you an update at, okay. at next month's meeting on what happens. Okay. Are there any other future agenda items any board members would like to see? Okay, any, uh, no public comment there. All right, so uh, we have reached the last item, item 12. Uh, that was a dense meeting, but we got through it. So uh, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board will be held on Wednesday, September 27th at 5 p.m in this room. With that, I adjourn this meeting of the Board of Community Services at 7.09 p.m. Thank you.